Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. Hope you're having an awesome week. So uh, last night I was really excited because Irvin Finance has put out the card uh, that I've talked about. So this is a promo going out to their beta members, 20,000 beta members. What you got to do to claim the card is have a Irvin.Finance beta account and then link up your Loopring Layer 2 um, or GameStop wallet to it. And then they are airdropping out to people. So they've airdropped out the first 1,000 cards and then they're tweeting about it. I was really excited about that because it... Um, showcases web3 i love that dave is talking with byron from loopring promoting the be your own bank kind of mentality decentralized finance in the midst of everything going on in the broader economic sector the kind of convergence of different parties dave and um, loopring and also like for example the loopworms guys which i've talked about before they are pioneering web3 gaming and so Part of what I was doing last night was I was really excited about the card going out. I was like, you know what, let's make, let's make a card for uh, loop, loopworms or uh, looperlands. So I was drawing and in the background I was watching the big short because I was like, you know what, I've always wanted to dissect this video. So that's what part of this is going to be about is to talk about the fact that, you know, we've got this card coming out here. If you want to claim it, set up an Irvin beta account and link up your wallet. Make sure you get the airdrop. Card 73. I'll put out a little bit later this week, but if you want to get it early, all you got to do is log into Looperlands tonight and they're going to have an event. So I'm excited about that too. I, I really like the idea of collaborating. Um, you know, I'm just an amateur artist and I just love having fun with it and maybe watching the big short, which is free right now on YouTube, but there are ads. So I had to watch it in this other uh, browser over here. And when we go through these seven clips, which I think are so relevant to GameStop right now. We won't be able to see the video, but the audio is perfect and I'll kind of set up each clip and then explain the connections here as best I can. But before we do that, I wanna mention shorts must be in shambles. GameStop is doing what you know people have been saying for a while that they should do. We need to capture more of the digital gaming space. So they're setting up a digital store here. You can get a 10% discount on a digital digital uh, content and digital, digital currencies for different games and, and systems. This is great. They need to do a really good job on this. While uh, software sales represent you know, a falling percentage of overall revenue, I believe it was over 70% in the past for used and new, uh, new software. We're down to the, like the 30% range because hardware and um, collectibles are such a bigger chunk of our overall revenue now. But you know, this is gonna be huge. A huge part of, the, part of the short thesis was the decline of digital sales broadly with software. Um, and it kind of goes perfectly to this point, which is that the short thesis at this point has basically imploded. The short thesis three years ago was that GameStop had, you know, several billion dollars in debt. They were losing revenue to digital sales. So it was a race to see, um, could the company turn around? before that debt came due. Well, the debt is gone. So bankruptcy is completely off the table. You'll see, you'll still see even articles like mention it or anything like that. It's like, there's no debt here. What are you guys even talking about? And with a profitable Q4 last quarter, potentially profitable Q3 here coming up in less than a month, maybe three weeks away. And then uh, we've got Q4 after that, we've got the PlayStation Slim. We've got all kinds of great releases happening on an ongoing basis, Pokemon. Um, we had Zelda earlier this year. We've got a Mario game, all kinds of things happening. Call of Duty, I believe. So I think, um, you know, people are maybe distressed with the price of the stock, but I would encourage people to think about the big picture and maybe the big short will give us some insight into that as we um, move forward before I uh, talk about these other tabs here. So in this first clip, what's going on here is Michael Burry, who interestingly went long on GameStop years and years ago and sold, sold um, in late December of 2020 before like the stock really took off, taking about like 100% gain, I believe at the time, which was a great gain. But um, so he saw the GameStop play early on. And in this scene, he's explaining to his primary investor why he's shorting the housing market. So I want you guys to think about that. He, he represents a hedge fund. It's not his own money. He's taken this enormous short position against the, uh, you know, the imminent collapse of the, of the um, mortgage-backed securities and, um, you know, um, broader, um, like, mortgage market in the United States. This is in probably 2006, 2007. So it's well before events of 2008. 
And um, I, want, I want you to just listen to what's going on between him and his investor and how he's explaining the play. Brendan made the sale, can you believe it? Somebody shorted 200 million mortgage bonds. That was just with Deutsche. Where does he in half the town? How much in total? 1.3 billion. What? That's, that's pretty much all of Scion's liquidity. Michael, this is high Distress. That is not all of our liquidity. And I'm not certain you really understand this trade. This is a certainty. I, I consider myself a mentor to you. But our company is not comfortable with this investment. Am I being clear? Lawrence, I have full autonomy when it comes to investment strategy. You can read our agreement. Do not throw our inception agreement in my face, Michael. We had an underlying understanding you wouldn't act like a damn crazy man. This is not crazy. I mean, it's all very logical. So now we pay off premiums on these swaps against the housing market until the mortgages fail? In other words, we lose millions until something that's never happened before happens? So that's a great point. So this, you know, had never happened before, although in the movie they explain it had happened in like the 1930s. Um, I love Michael Burry's point though, it's logical. All right, the GameStop play is completely logical. Back when people dove into this head first, you know, with 140%, 160% or 220% short interest, whatever you wanna, you know, go by. Um, it made sense that if we go long on it, shorts will have to eventually pay out we know from various sources like Pedrofi that it was gonna to go to the moon, but they shut off the buy button, right? And ever since they've been crushing the price down aggressively, it's logical. Our side of the equation is extremely logical. Is it painful to endure years of struggle? As we're gonna see in these other clips, sure, but the logic of the play doesn't, doesn't stop. And just because other people don't see it doesn't make it not true. So you're going to, you know, you're going to encounter people that are like, well, look at the price of the stock is down. And when you explain to them, yeah, but they've sold billions of shares or whatever, hundreds of millions of shares, potentially, um, they're not going to completely understand it because they're going to be so hyper-focused on their way of looking at it. But if you're logical, like Michael Burry was with the housing market, he saw something that other people couldn't see and an outcome that other people weren't willing to recognize. So I think that's the same same thing with GameStop. People aren't willing to believe that we can live in a fraudulent system, but it's possible. And it's, there's plenty of evidence that that's the case. So in this next clip, um, now his primary investor has flown out to him uh, to talk to him about the position he's taken on because he's having to burn millions of dollars every month in these premiums for these swaps. And, you know, at some point, the the capital base of Skyon, you know, could be depleted, and they could lose on the whole position. What's great about the GameStop situation is we're in the reverse. So if we think about this from both angles, in in the position of a long like myself or maybe you, um, buying shares at GameStop, you know, costs us capital now, but we're not buying options, we're not buying swaps, we're not buying any derivatives. We can just take those shares and we can DRS them if we want to. And then we can just sit on them. And while we're sitting on a paper loss, kind of like banks are doing right now with their bonds, um, of 10, 20, 40, 50, 60% or whatever, it doesn't actually burn our cash base. And if we're still working, then we're gonna be able to pay our bills. The reverse is the people on the short, or, yeah, the short side of the GameStop trade are burning a incomprehensible amount in premiums, just like Skyon was doing here. So their primary investors must be going to them and saying, what are you doing? You're burning money every month, and they're trying to explain to them, no, 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 we can get out of this trade if we just keep shorting this thing. And they're saying, well, you're paying premiums every month on these swaps, you know, we're not feeling comfortable with this play anymore. And that's why you're probably seeing people pull their money out of places like Credit Suisse, and maybe why they collapsed, or UBS, or maybe these other banks or market makers. So let's hop into the second clip here, and hopefully we don't get any ads along the way. Every, a, a, anyone can see that there's a real estate bubble. Actually, no one can see a bubble. That's what makes it a bubble. That's dumb, Lawrence. It's always markers. Mortgage fraud was quintupled since 2000. The average take home pay is flat, but home prices are soaring. That means the homes are debt, not assets. So, Mike Burry of San Jose, a guy who gets his hair cut at Supercuts and doesn't wear shoes knows more than Alan Greenspan and Hank Paulson. Oh, yeah, yeah, talk to him, but yes, he does. That's cute, that's cute. Are you being sarcastic with us, Mike? 
Lawrence, I don't know how to be sarcastic. I don't know how to be funny. I don't know how to work people. I, I just know how to read numbers. How big's your short position right now? Uh, just the one that went through the And the premiums? Well, we paid uh, roughly 80 to 90 million each year, which is high, but I was the first to do this trade. Watch, it will pay. I, I may have been early, but I'm not wrong. It's the same thing. It's the same thing, Mike. You're managing a fund of, what, 555 million? In six years, it'll all be gone. On one bet, you know, in the second quarter of 07 is when the adjustable rates kick in and the defaults will skyrocket. Yeah, S says you. How much... So that's a great point. A couple couple key points there. The first one is um, they mentioned that you know people are going to want to pull their money out of the fund, and I we've seen that like I mentioned with these uh, with these uh, market makers and so forth. Another one is that um, you know the time on it. So he was early, um, and and maybe we were too, right? I mean, <laughs> ironically, Michael Bur Burry was incredibly early to the GameStop play, and then he left early too. But he took he took a win with it. Um, but being early in finance is often like being wrong, right? So um, I think maybe that's something for people to think about is, you know, if it feels like it's been a long time, think how long it's been for DFE or others in this play. Three years in finance is, is a blip on the radar. Um, but I, I just love the whole element of the stress that they're under with the, uh, with the premiums getting paid out. The situation's looking bleak because you're burning your capital to maintain your position. And then at some point you lose the whole bag on, on it. So um, just a great way of explaining it from their, from their angle because while we're sort of in the same position as Michael, the banks are really, or whoever's on the other side of the GameStop trade, are in the, are in the harder position. And so I just think it's a great uh, way to describe it here. This next one I think is really important because people are wondering like, how can this happen? And how did it happen in 2008? How did we have the scenario where I think one person went to jail, right? Um, but more importantly, how was it that while defaults in the US on mortgages, people were um, going into bankruptcy, short selling their properties, the housing market was starting to go into decline. This was in 2007. How was it that the underlying securities could be failing? But the mortgage-backed securities, the um, you know, conglomeration of all these bad mortgages into these bonds that were being sold by banks to you know, pensions and all these other different places, why were they still holding value? It didn't make any sense, right? We can kind of look at the current stock market and wonder the same question. Why is it that with interest rates going through the roof, inflation really bad, um, consumer debt exploding, and all these other issues going on in our markets. The stock market is currently pumping a bit. We've got FTX token pumping. We've got Bitcoin pumping, right? It, it seems counterintuitive, but um, in this situation right here, we've got this other group that's short on GameStop or uh, <laughs> short on the housing market, um, meeting with Moody's to talk to them about how this could be the case. How is it that the underlying, the mortgages could be failing, but the ratings agencies have not changed any of the ratings on the bonds? so that they're still holding value. So let's talk about this clip, or watch this clip here. So, alrighty. Front point partners, how can Standard & Poor's help you? Well, we don't understand why the rate... Sorry, they're not meeting with Moody's, they're meeting with Standards and <laughs> Standard & Poor. Moody's got, um, <laughs> has a tab over here, and that's why I got it confused. Ratings agencies have a downgraded subprime bond since mm. the underlying loans are clearly deteriorating. Well, the delinquency rates do have people worried, but they're actually within our models. So, says you. You're convinced the underlying mortgages in these bonds are solid loans. Well, that is our opinion. Oh, yes. correct. Dave, have you looked at the loan level data? What do you think right? we I mean, do here all day? loans to anybody with a, with a credit score Excuse and a pulse. Me, sir, what do you think we do here all day? I'm not sure. That's why we're here. Here's what I don't understand. Check, we read check. If these check mortgage again. bonds are so stable. They are so Let's solid. Check the friend. Mm -hmm. Have you ever refused so to rate? That's a delusion. Them. Georgia, have you ever refused to rate any of these bonds upper tranches triple A? 
Can we see the paperwork on those Oh, kids? I'm under no obligation to share that information with you. Just to answer the me. question, Georgia, can you name one time in the past year where you checked the tape and you didn't give the banks the AAA percentage they wanted? If we don't give them the ratings, they'll go to Moody's, right down the block. If we don't work with them, they will go to our competitors. Not our fault, simply the way the world works. Yes, now you see. And I never said that. They're what? selling ratings for fees. The way we shop. <laughs> So this is an awesome clip because um, it mentions Moody's, which I'll mention again later with another tab, but Standards and Poor and Moody's are the ratings agencies, which are supposed to be safeguarding against fraud. Something I mentioned, mentioned on the other clip was Michael Burry's big indicator that he mentioned was the rising rate of fraud. We saw the collapse of FTX. We've seen fraud going on all over the place in our markets. We know it's going on. South Korea is mentioning all the fraud, right? So with the rise in fraud, it indicates that a collapse is coming, is what Michael Burry saw. But right here we see how the fraud is enabled. We see that the ratings agencies themselves are, are compromised because they're publicly traded companies. If they don't give the banks the ratings they want, then they're not gonna get the business. So, and then they're publicly traded, so they gotta do what's better for the underlying. And then she mentions at the end there, I love how this lady too, she's wearing glasses because she's blind and it's great, <laughs> great uh, symbolism because they're blind against the, uh, the, the market about what's about, about to happen. And she just mentions, well, I've got a boss, right? And I gotta do what my boss says. And it's just such a, a terrible state of our situation where people allow injustice to happen because they, they feel like they have to because they're working for, for a nine to five, right? They're working for their job. So, you know, while they talk about the stupidity of the system later on here, they also maybe mention, you know, people just do what they feel they need to do to survive. And that's, that's an element of this. So how could this crime be going on? Well, people are blind to it willingly but also because they kind of feel compelled to just to make their own ends meet, right? So it might be not um, malice that people are going, you know, banks or hedge funds are going ultra short on GameStop. It's just that they don't know any better. They don't know what to do. They're stupid. And they're just doing what they're told by people above them, you know, to enter into these swaps or do whatever it is that they're doing, um, shorting ETFs, you know, whatever it may be putting, um, you know, outsized positions outside the United States to, you know, hide them from regulators. In this next clip, love this one because at this point, the, uh, not only are the underlying mortgages, you know, rapidly deteriorating, but the mortgage-backed securities are actually increasing in value. The premiums are increasing in cost for these various people that are betting against the housing market. And they're wondering, how can that even be? How's that possible? They're starting to get extremely frustrated and this is where like the movie really hits me personally because so many people are looking at the price of GameStop and being like, we just had a good earnings call six months ago or uh, three months ago, great earnings call. You know, we beat all estimates. Uh, we came in at negative 0 0.01 cents or, you know, one cent a share um, down $2 million for the quarter. That's a great call. A lot of great reasons to celebrate. And yet the stock price doesn't reflect reality at all. Right. And we watch it day to day and we see the shenanigans and we're just like, how is it possible that we have 85 percent buys every single day, um, short percent volumes through the roof and the, the price just keeps going down? It makes no sense. So they're wrestling with that. And I love the conclusion at this point. So um, here's this next clip. Mortgage defaults have done nothing but go up. Yet you quote us a higher price on the bonds. Please explain that to me. There's no way that makes sense. There's no way you're marking these swaps appropriately. I mean, why should we back out of this trade right now? Didn't I say when we made this deal with the rating agencies, the SEC, and the big banks were clueless? Didn't I say that? Yes, you didn't did. Didn't I say it? Yes, you did. You did. Yeah. Shut up. You did. Now their foot's on fire. They think their stake is done, and you're surprised? That's not stupidity. That's fraud. Tell me the difference between stupid and illegal and I'll have my wife's brother arrested. <laughs> that was funny. I guess you just don't realize how clueless the system really is. Yes, there's some shady stuff going down, but trust me, it's fueled by stupidity. Look at yourselves. You know, you pass yourself off as cynical people, but you still have some faith in the system, don't you? But so great ending there to that quote, you know, like, 
continually I'm trying to find patterns. I think other people are trying to rationalize what is going on. How can they do this? How can it go on for so long? Why is the SEC not doing something? Why are regulators not getting involved? Um, and the, the system is just paralyzed with just because it's people. It's made up of individuals, people trying to get a paycheck, people trying to survive another day, people trying to do what their boss said, people not knowing. How many people just don't know because they're flooded with bad information about GameStop that it has no debt, right? That it has a CEO at the helm that's had a track record of success, knows what they're doing, and that they're fighting the short thesis on every front. You know, people won't know. They'll just look at the information given and they'll do the best they can with it. And I think that that's why um, I like making these videos, why I like telling the story of GameStop, because only with information can people turn, you know, turn to a new way of looking at things. And I think that that's um, an opportunity we have every day through posting on communities and here and just talking about the story to make, make sure that people understand that, um, you know, fraud goes on every day in our markets. That's why I love the work of Dave Lauer and Dr. T. And the more we can raise awareness to it and get people fired up about it, the more we can um, work to improve it. This next part is really important because um, Michael Burry has been in this play now for a very long time. He's seen Sky on Capital lose 20% of its overall value. I think we can really, <laughs> really feel like what he's feeling right now. We're all in the red. <laughs> literally, everybody's in the red on this play. Um, he's about to give up. He's literally about to give up. Um, we're about an hour and 17 minutes into the video. I'm not going to play this clip, but you know, his feeling, um, you really got to see it to, to get the sentiment. Um, he's, he's really feeling despair and um, he's about to close out his position the next day, right? So I don't know if that's for dramatic effect or if that's really what went on um, in the real life circumstances. But imagine capitulating right near the very end, right? And not getting to the victory moment. That would be brutal. But uh, he sticks it out. Um, he decides actually to hang in there. Um, I'm gonna go to this next clip. This one's really powerful because as we're watching banks collapse, another bank just collapsed last week, right? And we're now seeing huge unrealized losses on our banking sector. And a lot of very interesting glitches start to happen with um, Mortgages being unable to be paid. Uh, we're seeing people not getting their paychecks. These are very concerning. Um, you know, they're calling them all hacks and malware attacks, but these are underpinnings of something bigger going on in the financial system. And for the longest time, people have said on Super Stonk, like, you know, this could usher in, you know, or coincide with, like Volkswagen did back in 2008, an overall market calamity. And while we've been looking at those signs as you know a herald of things to come with GameStop and a good thing, it's gonna hurt regular everyday people. So in this scene, these uh, smaller hedge fund guys are talking with Brad Pitt, who's like their mentor, and they're very excited because they just took you know they basically just bought in the best deal of a lifetime, which is kind of going on right now with GameStop. If you buy shares at twelve fifty, right, which is where the stock is today. That's the best deal you've been getting on the stock for like two and a half, three years. Um, you know, that's where they're at right now. They're feeling giddy because they're getting these shares so low. They're seeing the overall market um, struggling. They know that their play is solid and they're feeling really comfortable and confident and they're excited for an upcoming collapse. And he explains why you have to really temper that excitement. Do you have any idea what you just did? Well, come on, we just made the deal of our lifetimes. We should celebrate. You just bet against the American economy. Hell yeah, we did. Yeah. Hell yeah. Which means, oh. which means, if we're right, if we're right, people lose homes, people lose jobs, people lose retirement savings, people lose pensions. You know what I hate about banking? It reduces people to numbers. Here's a number. Every 1% unemployment goes up, 40,000 people die. Did you know that? No. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. I'm just excited. Just don't dance. All right. Where are you going? Oh, I just got really scared. So like kind of going back to the first clip or second clip when Michael Burry is saying, you know, he's just a numbers guy. He just sees it logically. He can't be sarcastic. He can't um, win people over. That's kind of like me. I feel like I'll discuss these issues and I'll be really sober about the whole thing and just kind of explain it as it is. And um, having gone through 2008, knowing many, many people that lost their houses um, and lost. And in 2001, my dad lost everything to the um to the stock market collapse, the um, the tech bubble, and so forth, 
And he ended up killing himself over that whole scenario. And so this kind of stuff very much personally affects me. Um, it's why I'm in this fight, because I feel like people saw what was coming. And as the movie describes, um, it was a complete casino. The regulators were out to lunch or captured, as also discussed in another great clip here I didn't put on here, where the, the girl from the SEC um, goes and hangs out with the Goldman guys to get a job with Goldman. And they're wondering, how is that even legal that people can just you know, work at the SEC one day and then go get a job at Goldman Sachs the next day. That's the world we live in. These people brought on economic calamity um, and they made millions and billions of dollars off of it. No one went to jail um, and the collapse hurts regular everyday people. So, you know, I'm nervous at the same time. I think I've mentioned that, you know, while I'm excited to see Credit Suisse collapse and UBS now really struggling, if UBS does collapse, we're looking at we're looking at some hard times. We're looking at some really uh, distressing times, and not only is it going to hurt everyday people, but they're not going to tell the story, right? It's not like all of a sudden all the media pundits and all the all the paid propagandists are going to say, "Oh, you know, the GameStop people were right," and this all has to do with this egregious short position um, against this small retail uh, company that a lot of household investors went long on. They're not going to say any of that, right? If anything, they'll probably just not mention it at all, right? Like they never mentioned Volkswagen really or associated with with the crash of 2008. Or worst case scenario, they could blame household investors and basically say that all this damage has been done because uh, this group of household investors conspired or something to take down the economic system. It's like, no, that's just not what it is. And uh, so that's what we have to look forward to, even with a victory it's going to feel like a defeat, honestly. And, and that's going to be rough. It's going to be really, really hard. So I'm just going to end with this final clip. I know this is a super long video. Uh, this one is where all these glitches start to happen in the financial system. They're attributing them to malware or, um, you know, just systems being down. The, <laughs> we're here. Like this is happening in the last week or two. Like, so I just feel like the timing on watching the big short struck with me. I stopped watching the video here because I want to watch the rest with, um, you know, like open eyes and not get fatigued. And I want to grab some of the key moments. But I would encourage you guys as we wrap up this last clip here and then um, go over to some of these tabs on up updates with GameStop. If there's any moments for you as you watch through it or in the past, if you watch through it, share them in the comments below. I didn't mention everything in the first chunk of the movie here, like first hour and a half. But I love how the timing on the movie, too, like you're enduring for 90 plus minutes, 100 minutes, and you're like, man, they are losing on this position. This must feel horrible. And this is exactly where we are today. People feel terrible. People feel awful. They're optimistic, but they're also scared um, for what's to come. Even on Wall Street. 
Jamie, and this is me being honest here, okay? It took me years to build my relationships on Wall Street. No bank or ratings agency is gonna confirm a story like this just because it comes from two guys in a, sorry, garage band hedge fund that wow. thinks it's the apocalypse. Wow. I thought you were for real, Casey. You know, I have to say I really did. Yeah, Jamie, you try being for real with a three-year-old and a wife getting her master's degree. Love this. So, so many things to unpack on this clip. So, number one, you got the press that won't get involved, right? Because they're just trying to protect their own butts. They don't want to lose their connections. They're working a nine to five too, right? So, same situation with GameStop. Very little like um, press outlets are telling the story the right way. Sometimes you see the street publish articles that are correct. Um, but you're seeing that the banks begin to unload their positions. So this is important. They, the underlines have all collapsed. The CDOs have collapsed in value, but the mortgage, I mean, uh, sorry, the insurance is still being priced as if they hadn't. And they're selling it all to the public. So like right now, people might be wondering, well, what's happening with GameStop? They could definitely be transferring this position to other people, right? To, to pension funds, to private investors anything they can to get rid of it. I think they're doing it through puts and I'll explain why in a little bit. So let's tab through a couple things really quick. I'll wrap up the video. Again, I would encourage you guys to watch the big short. Tell me what you think. Hopefully that didn't go on for too long, but just love all the connections with our situation, the time, endurance, the mechanics, all of it, the fraud, the press, the regulators, no one wanting to do anything. We can see here, nothing in the data makes sense, just like in those clips. We have 88% buys on GameStop. Price continues to get hammered down. How is that possible? We've got shills like crazy telling us we're wrong, right? They're starting to really post against DRS saying, hey guys, the price has gone nothing but down. Clearly DRS, DRS is the reason why. That is absurd in the fact that we know that the only time that the price actually goes up is when computer share is buying shares. So clearly DRSing matters. It's just that they're able to crush the price super hard every other stock in the basket's been has lost like 90 percent of its value gamestop hasn't so drs in my opinion is the only thing shoring up any value at all they are desperately trying to get people to stop drsing personally i'm continuing to drs say that strongly um so we can see that sentiment coming up happening more and more in the comments i don't know why the mods aren't deleting it i don't know very suspicious this person says what I just said right here is that DRS is the only thing that actually causes the price to go up for sure. You can see we're at the deepest low we've been at. How is that even possible? We've got no FTD data, right? Again, regulators out to lunch. What is going on? So they haven't reported FTD data in the longest, like what is going on here? It's an automated system. They know the FTD is the day they happen and yet they haven't reported them since September. What is going on? We can see that RSI is the lowest it's been throughout this saga. So this is completely oversold. It's been oversold for months. Why is all this happening? Puts. There's been an incredible surge, 2000% interest in put buying going on, on the stock. So let me explain how this could be affecting the stock. So um, I'll draw a quick picture with paint. I don't wanna, or I won't do it with paint. I'll just explain it with words really quick. So why would puts and why, why do I continue to see people posting on Superstock, hey guys, here's a smart thing to do. Instead of buying shares, just sell a put. Why would they want more and more people selling puts? The reason why I think they're, they're doing that is they're selling puts too. Think about this. If you are short egregiously on GameStop, say 200 million shares, 300 million shares at GameStop, right? What you can do is you can actually sell a ton of puts. And if there's very low volume, if volume is very dry because of DRS, the price is gonna fall down in those puts. Those puts are gonna be like a magnet. And if you sell the puts, then you're gonna get shares. Well, who's gonna be providing those shares? Whoever bought the put, right? So if they can lure people in, like they did with having people buy the CDOs, buy the mortgage-backed securities and the insurance on them, um, to transfer their position, that's what they could do with puts. They could get people, if they sell, you know, three million puts, and then they get those puts to uh, someone to become the counterparty on them, the counterparty needs to sell shares. Well, that person doesn't have any shares, right? They're gonna be going short on it, potentially naked short, some kind of market maker, hedge fund, and private investor, household investor, right? They suddenly get shares, all of a sudden they've offset their naked short position with a legitimate share, right? So if 
if I were incredibly egregiously short on this thing, I would encourage tons of people to start selling puts, make sure that there's no volume, route every, everything off exchange, and then get the price to fall down into the puts that I've sold and and you know reap all those so now I'm long on it. That's the way that they could go long on it and then ride an upswing, hypothetically. Um, so this is just like that last clip in the movie. We're seeing all kinds of um, things happening in the financial system. We're seeing that uh, the mortgage lender, Mr. Cooper, isn't able to accept payments. We're seeing transfers happen or failures in transfer and payments. So people aren't getting their paychecks. This is all very indicative of things going, going bad in the system. We're seeing that Moody's has cut the outlook on the US economy finally. Like we know that things aren't looking good, but they weren't rating it that way. Doesn't make any sense. How is the treasury supposed to pay this debt at five, six percent interest when debt's at the highest rate it's ever been? Um, so this final post, I think I'll dissect it in the um, next video. It's so good. It's talking again about puts, but I'm gonna end the video here because it's so long. I would encourage you guys to, again, go on Irvin, claim your card, um, go on Looperlands, uh, claim the card tonight, watch the big short, um, comment on Superstonk, get involved, buy something from a store, do whatever you feel like doing. Have a great weekend. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.